Okay. Um, I, how are you? Uh, how's the atmosphere? I mean, how are you experiencing it? How do you think the girls are are dealing with it? Just you know, being on the on the big stage this week. Um, I, Callie can you know answer for you know for the the players and herself, but um, my thoughts are and what I see is it's it's really fun. Um, you know, uh, the atmosphere. You know, you, you, we're at a hotel where. 22 other teams are staying, even though they coordinate things so you don't really run into each other as much. Um, we had our first practice in the Alamo Dome today, and that was fun, great atmosphere. It, it kind of has a, a feeling of, you know, kind of what the men's tournament is, where everything is on a neutral site. You know, women's have always been very regional, and you've played at somebody else's school, um, and usually that school was in the regional, where here it's like a true neutral site um there's idaho state signage everywhere when you go to practice they put it up on the video trons and you have signage in your uh your hotel floor and your your um, film rooms and everybody's very nice and accommodating and um you know so it's it's pretty fun it's fun and exciting what do you think the specific challenges are with uh, Kentucky? You know, I assume you've looked at some more films since the beginning of the week. Well, yeah, obviously Howard and Patterson, you know, we're, we're referring to them right now as Batman and Robin. You know, um, you've know, got Howard, one of the leading scorers in the country, um, already, already been named All-American. Um, and uh, she's up for the National Player of the Year Award, SEC Player of the Year. And um, she's just, and she's 6'2", a 6'2 guard. So, very talented, can shoot the pull up, um, and everything is run through her and Patterson for the most part. You know, so that's going to be a, a big challenge to try to collectively slow them down. Um, and then on the defensive, oh, sorry, on the offensive end, we could see some pressure and some changing defenses. And although I think we handle those things well, um, it's going to all kind of come down to how composed we can kind of be in this moment you know, being on this uh, stage. Can we, you know, look at it like another game and just lock in and play hard? Or do we get caught up in the atmosphere of everything? Um, that, that'll that be, I think, a key to all of this. We've talked a lot about just sort of your consistent challenges with these major conference teams or the, the height, the athleticism, and that's something that you just, you, you can't really match. Is that going to be a, a big problem with them? Or is there other things that they do that are sort of, you know, also going to be difficult to overcome. I, I think it is going to be a challenge, but not as direct as it normally is. Um, you know, you worry about height because they'll post you up. Well, you know, I, I, Kentucky does not have a strong uh, post game that they look to. And I say that, and they'll probably throw in the ball 50 times when we play them. But um, they they are very, uh, very much a perimeter-oriented team. Like I said, they're running a lot of things through Howard and Patterson, and Patterson. So their athleticism and size is going to come more into play in terms of passing lanes and driving to the basket, you know, the, you, them using that to disrupt things. I've seen, uh, I'm not sure if you saw or not, but the, the New York Times picked you guys as uh, one of the upset specials. How your reaction to that, maybe getting a little bit more national love than your typical seed. That's it's fun. And, and um, you know, we're, we're that's March, March Madness and that anticipation, that excitement about uh, possible upsets is always what people talk about. So it's fun to be a part of that. It's, it's fun to bring uh, this national attention to Idaho State and to Pocatello and our team. Um, you know, we're, we're probably not in the New York Times a whole lot. Uh, and I think there's a, there's, there's a potential for another article to come out later in the New York Times uh, that will talk about us. Uh, we've already done an interview with that, Dora and I. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about, you know, trying to take advantage of this moment and bring um, attention to our wonderful area into Pocatello and uh, to Idaho State. Uh, Seeing so kind of going off that, uh, I'm sure you guys are, I don't know if you, are you guys reading the articles about the possible upsets and um, are you feeling that pressure? And is that, is that pressure good for you guys? You think? I, I personally have not read it. I, I just saw the headline. <laughs> I didn't get into it. My, my wife read it. And um, 
some other people looked into it and made some comments about it. But I don't know, like, have you, did you guys read it or? We didn't really pay much attention to it. They didn't pay as much attention to it, <laughs> is, is what Callie says, but. Um, obviously, you guys have been there since Tuesday, uh, but spending a lot of time in your hotel room. Um, is there anything that the, the girls are doing to kind of stay active, even though they're in their hotel rooms a lot? Do they've got a basketball in there? Are you guys doing any exercises or anything? What's that like? Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Callie answer that for us. <laughs> well, we get to practice once a day. Um, so that's been good for us. Um, we've been doing a bit more downtime because we are in our rooms a lot, but we get to leave our hotel room and go and do film and do walkthroughs and things. So we're still trying to stay active and focused at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah, not no tourists, no walks on the river walk yet or anything like that. But uh, um, we get, we're getting out a little bit more than I, I, I thought we would. So that's good. So somewhat along those lines, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the discrepancies between some of the, the facilities provided for the men's team and the women's team, um, you know, maybe some discrepancies in the, the, the swag bags you guys are getting, the weight rooms, whatever. Um, what's been your experience uh, so far with just the way the, the facilities have been there and the way you guys have been treated? Um, it, it's tough because I don't know exactly what all is going on at the men's tournament. I mean, you see some pictures on social media and things like that. The, the weight room situation was uh, very noticeable, and that's received a lot of attention. Um, you know, uh, the gyms, and the, the practice spaces and meeting spaces seem to be fine. Um, you know, I don't know how well the men are eating. And compared to us, I, I don't know about their swag bags. I can't speak on some of that stuff, but... It's been pretty good, and but there does seem to be a pretty, obviously based on the pictures, pretty big discrepancy in the, the weight facility. What uh, what are you wearing, man? Me? That's an old Idaho State Bengals shirt. This is from like this is probably four years old. It was actually a shooting shirt, I think, of our players one year. But it, yeah, it's it's old. <laughs> Adidas used to custom make these for you. Yeah, I hadn't seen that design before. Yeah, it, all this design, it says little words like uh, toughness, Idaho State, Bengals. It's just uh, all these different words. What's the experience for you been like? And you are... You know, I, I, I know Coach Elsie, Kentucky is technically in her first NCAA tournament as the head coach. Uh, this is your, your second time, but it's been a while. How would you compare it to, to you know, 2012? And, and just do you think the added experience helped you from then your time before? Yeah, yeah. So technically, even as an assistant, I've, so I've gone four times. And so I can kind of reflect back to the two times, even as an assistant. But I'm really enjoying uh, the weather. You know, last time we went, we were in Spokane <laughs> and it was a little bit colder. And uh, I'm enjoying the, the neutral site format. Uh, it, it, it almost has a feel of like a men's, like I said, a men's regional or men's final four. You're, you're preparing to play in a football stadium. Um, and it's just uh, a lot more unique, a lot different. And, um, but uh, in a very positive way, COVID is slowing down some of the other things that we'd normally be able to do, but um, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's, it's cool. I, you know, and, and, and I personally have moved on from, I think, um, a just happy to be here type attitude, you know? Um, so I've kind of transitioned into, um, yeah, it's great to be here. Now what, now what's the next step? And that's kind of my, at my attitude now, I'm not as, overwhelmed or excited about all the little things you know um i'm i'm really focused on the game how do you move that over to the players who of course it is their first time and probably a lot of them are just excited to be there it, it's hard um you know because we can have discussions about it but they just don't have the the background you know the background experience um and we, you know we really get into um, the matchup and what Kentucky's like and try to focus on that part and trying to go from having a, a really good season to having a historical season um, is 
is what we're, we've been trying to work on, but um, it, it's, it's difficult, it's difficult. What do you expect in the atmosphere to uh, be like in the Alamo Dome? Like, are they doing multiple courts in there? There's uh, two in there. There's uh, the north and south. That's what um, I thought. So they kind of just put you closer to an end zone. Um, but yeah, but the seating is all set up on three sides, like, like a football stadium. And then one side won't have anything. Uh, but a curtain right around the 40 yard line. Do you know of anybody making the trip down there to see you guys from Pocatello? Yeah, yeah. Um, some former players of mine, um, friends and family from Pocatello. A lot of the players, friends and families are coming over from Pocatello. Um, some, some of the boosters. Plane tickets are expensive to come here at the last minute. <laughs> my wife, I think my wife looked into it, my wife and kids, and it was uh, $700, $800 a ticket. You know, so I think some people didn't make it or some people initially wanted to. And then they looked at the pr ticket prices and they're like, ah, we can't make it. But um, but yeah, there'll be a good group here. Um, I think we'll have, uh, you know, over 100 of people here. Going back a little bit to, to Kentucky and to, to Rye Howard, I, you guys have not really played a team that runs through one player that much this year. I mean, Idaho's got Monta multiple girls. Montana State's got multiple girls. Kansas State would have been something like that, but Ioka Lee was out, right? Like Nebraska spread it around a lot. Is there any sort of different focus just because, you know, they have the one player that you really need to watch out for? I don't know. Can you think of any game we have this year? No, Kansas State just do it through the whole play. Yeah, yeah. Even when, yeah, when Lee was out against Kansas State, um, when she actually got hurt, she only played four minutes against Kentucky, and then she got hurt in that game. But um, then they started running a lot through Carr, who was really good. Like, and she was hitting pull-ups in our face, and like she was just a really talented player, but then kind of ran out of steam towards the end. Um, I think in the past, we've run into some of this, you know, where um, we play, when we played Duke, you know, they, they went through two players. Uh, Oklahoma State had a great post. Yeah, Savannah Smith. I like, can see Cali has that experience of, you know, some of our newer people don't have that experience of everything getting run through one player. Um, and I think Idaho back in the day is kind of all Pearson for Rens. Um, But uh, we haven't had that this year. And uh, yeah, I, I think it makes things uh, easier in terms of knowing what you want to do and how you want to slow it down. But also what can happen is the other people have better than average nights because you're sending so much help to that one matchup. And so we have to have a balance of being able to guard both. What's been the biggest thing for you this weekend? I mean, the, the moment or just the, you know, the experience where you realize, you know, sort of we're, we're, I'm back here in the NCAA tournament. This is sort of this is the big time this weekend. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, you know, it's kind of fun to, just always to relive this stuff to the players because it's their first time, you know, and to see their reactions to things and watch and see how they feel. I mean, I don't know. Like, so what, is, what are some of your, like, takeaways from all this? What are some of the experiences you're enjoying or, like, that are making impressions on you? Um, I honestly love seeing the other teams. Like, you, you know, we there's some girls here that, you know, going to be at the WNBA or really good and you see them on TV and then you get to see them in real life. Like we've got to see UConn Paige. We've seen Paige walk by a few times um, and she's a great player. So, we, you know, we fangirl a little bit when we see them and just going through the whole process of like the best of the best. I think it's great and I think we're really excited. And I think like Coach said before, we, we've had a good season, but I think it's time that we, we want to make history. We really, you know, finished the conference tournament. We're all excited and having fun. But then we, you know, did film in Kentucky and we're like, okay, like, let's try and make a bit of history, you know, and work hard. Yeah, I, right when we checked in, we checked in with South Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, so we saw the whole South Carolina team, Don Staley and all those guys. And then, uh, yeah, UConn, when you go to COVID test, it's in a gigantic, convention center and they have it all curtained off and you have to COVID test and then wait you know 20 30 minutes to get results for the whole group and we've seen Stanford walk by us and we've seen Connecticut walk by us and 
And uh, it's also been fun to see some friends like from my big West days, I saw UC Davis and I was able to chat with them a little bit. Saw Gonzaga, Gonzaga went right by us, got to say hi to Jenna and, and uh, to Jordan Green, our, my old assistant. And so it's, that part's been fun. Yeah, any connections for you with, uh, with Kentucky? And I know we talked about, obviously, you guys both played Kansas State this year. There's a girl on that roster that you guys have, have played against, right? But any, any personal connections for you with their staff or their, their players? No, none. I don't. <laughs> the SEC is a conference that I, I know everybody out West, um, but the SEC is a different conference. I, I have some friends who are assistants in the SEC, um, you know, LSU, Florida, things like that. But um, I have zero connection. It, everyone in the SEC has a connection to Tennessee and Pat Summit. You know, it's like they either played at Tennessee, they coached at Tennessee, they were friends with Pat Summit. You know, Pat Summit's had such a huge impact on that conference and um, springboarding a lot of young women into the coaching profession. And, you know, you even look at the Kentucky head coach. She was a player and also coached at Tennessee. Um, I was interviewed the other day by Carolyn Peck from ESPN, and she coached at Tennessee. Even though she played at Vanderbilt, she coached at Tennessee for two years. So it's so many people are uh, connected in that conference. I guess the last one for, for Seton, uh, and sort of you guys are the opposite of Kentucky to where you don't have a girl scoring 20 points a game and being named All-American or, you know, barely even All-Conference. Do you think that, you know, helps people overlook you just because there's no, there's nothing to really grab onto with your rosters. I mean, you just have to explain that you guys are super balanced. And of course, when people are looking at, you know, potential upset teams, that makes it more difficult to sort of explain why you guys are good, right? Yeah, I, I think people who haven't seen us play much or haven't have a history playing against us won't know, um, you know, like Kentucky, I hope, you know, hope, hopefully they don't know. But well, um, I mean, everybody in the tournament, right? I mean, nobody would have had much reason to see you guys play, right? For, or, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Unless there's some type of a West Coast team or mid-major team. You know, Oklahoma State played us two years ago, and we have a history of playing Oklahoma State. You know, we've played them several times. But, um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, yeah, it, it probably is overlooked. It's, it's harder to zero in and trying to figure out what our identity is because you can't just go right to the stats and be like, okay, there's, there's A, B, and C that we got to cover. And these are the three things that they do. And if we do that, we're in good shape. You know, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. Thanks, Steve.